It gives me great honor and it gives me great pleasure to introduce to us Minnesota's First Lady and our next Second Lady of the United States, Mrs. Gwen Walls. at Sugar Magnolias. What a great place this is. And it is a thrill for me to be here in Georgia, my first time in Augusta. And here I am with all you great educators, and I'm so glad you brought your families along too. That is so nice um, to see families and friends and neighbors and communities. We know how to do that, that is for sure. And we gather today to say, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your important work that all of you are doing, and specifically for educators, for molding the minds of our future leaders. It matters. And what better way to express our thanks with, than with some good food and some good company? I'm going to tell you. I can tell I'm with the right people here in Augusta. Now, my husband, uh, Governor Walls, was in Georgia earlier this week, and Vice President Harris will be here tomorrow. And you want to know why? You know, you know, because we know that Georgia matters. But more importantly, we want you to know that you matter. You matter. That's right. And you know what else? We know we can win here! Yeah. And we're going to do that together. Yeah. You, me, Coach, Kamala, Doug, the whole bunch of us are doing this together. Now you've probably heard a little bit about Tim and Kamala. So I wanted to tell you just a little bit about myself, if that would be okay. Yeah. So like all of you, I wear a lot of different hats. Or in my case, I like to say, I wear a lot of different shoes, because I like shoes. So, if you like shoes, you can wear a lot of different shoes, too, or whatever it might be. I'm a mom, and I'm a sister, and I'm a friend, and I'm a retired military spouse. And it's the greatest honor of my life to be the First Lady of Minnesota, the state where I was born and have lived most of my life. Yes, but for most of my life, even when I was little, playing at home, I've been a teacher. And all of you know that teaching is not just what you do. Teaching is who we are. Yes. Yep. And you already told a little bit that that's how Tim and I met. We were both teachers in Nebraska, right out near the Pine Ridge Reservation. And do you know what he taught? He taught what? Social studies, good. A on that first quiz. There we go. And I taught English. And that's a story as old as time. And we even shared a classroom. If you can imagine, our district was short on space, and we were short on money. And so what they did is they took this divider and just put it right down the middle. Any of you taught in classrooms like that? Uh huh. Any of you taught in closets? Yep. Right? So they took this old choir room, and that's where that divider was. And guess whose class was a little louder? <laughs> Coaches, yeah. But we began to build a relationship because, and it's the first thing I loved about them, we believed in the power of education. Yeah. And we saw it firsthand. Now I want to tell you about one of our students that you probably have. If you're a teacher, you have some stories like this too. 
Waylon was a student who was in my English class that year, and he was on Tim's football team. And he was brilliant on the football field. But he was difficult in my class. And what I didn't know when that year began, but I learned very quickly, was that Waylon was reading way below his grade level. And he was acting out because he didn't want me to know that, and he also didn't want his peers to know that. But the school had this rule that if a student was failing a core class like English, then they couldn't play a sport. Now, why was Waylon coming to school? To play sports, right? So if we took that away from him, then I knew what was going to happen. He wasn't going to come to school. So I huddled up with Coach Walls to make a plan because I didn't want to lose Waylon or any other student. And we proposed this to Waylon. We said, hey, Waylon, if you come in for tutoring before school or during lunch or after school, you can keep playing football. And you know what? Waylon agreed. And he came in, and steadily, his reading began to improve. Yep. And you know what? Coach crossed across that divider every day, and he'd encourage Waylon, he'd read with him, they'd share book titles, and they read together, because that's how Tim and I work together, and that's how we see it. One student at a time, one person at a time, making a difference, seeing everyone. And Waylon, Waylon graduated, and his diploma was his team opportunity and we were so proud and you know what teachers we cannot help but see the potential in everyone right and we want everyone to have a chance to reach that potential now English teachers know that words really matter <laughs> so when we say everyone we mean everyone we don't mean some people. And guess what? And this is for those people hollering outside. And we don't only mean only the ones who vote for us. We mean all of us, them too. Those are the values that Vice President and my husband share. Everyone matters. Everyone counts. And when we send Tim and Kamala to the White House, they will be a president and a vice president for all Americans. And that's ultimately what this election is about. So when you are talking to people, calling people, knocking doors, having conversations with those friendly people out there, you ask them this question, who's fighting for you? And the answer is Kamala and Tim, because they have spent their entire careers fighting for hardworking, middle-class families like yours and their own. And they are going to work every single day to build an opportunity economy. Yeah. And here's what that means. That means an economy where everyone who works hard can get ahead and not just scrape by. One where everyday life is affordable and you don't have to choose between rent and prescription drugs. And one where you can start a small business, where you can buy a home, and where you can build a better future for your children. Now listen up out there. Trump and Vance have a different approach. And their extreme Project 2025 agenda is going to devastate a generation of students. And they put it all right up there in writing, if you can believe it. Their plan is to slash public school funding, to eliminate Head Start, to tell parents what books their children can read. No thank you. No thank you. And that is not all. Project 2025 agenda will rig the economy 
even more so for the rich. They say it right in the plan. It gives the rich another tax cut while giving the rest of us a tax hike. If you don't believe it, Google it, right? And it guts Social Security, it guts Medicare, and it guts health care too. Now who wants that? Nobody! Nobody, and make no mistake, they are coming for our reproductive freedom too. Now this week, we learned the story of Amber Thurman. And that's a young woman right here in Georgia. She was a mom of a six-year-old boy and a medical assistant with, dream, assistant with dreams of becoming a nurse. And in 2022, and I can hardly even believe it, she died of a severe infection after waiting for 20 hours in a hospital bed to get the urgent medical care she needed. Right here in Georgia. A committee of doctors and experts determined her death to be preventable. Shame, what a shame. And it is heartbreaking. It is a heartbreaking example of what happens when politicians get in between women and their doctors. So let's get one thing straight. Trump is the reason we're in this mess. Trump is the one who took Don Rowe. And Trump is the one that unleashed all this chaos and cruelty. And now he and his buddy Vance want to stick their noses, if you can imagine, further into our bedrooms and our doctor's offices. They are criminalizing women's reproductive health care nationwide. They are making it harder to get birth control than to buy a gun. They are even putting fertility treatments at risk. And this is personal for me. For a long time, Tim and I struggled with infertility. We wanted to have a family more than anything else. And we just had trouble. But we had access to fertility treatments. And while we're sick and tired of extreme politicians like Trump and Vance thinking they get to make decisions about our health care and our bodies and our family, I'm going to tell you, if it would have been up to them, I would not have been able to have children. And if it were up to Mr. Vance, I'd be a second class citizen in his view. Both of them, that's so wrong. So in this election, we are going to send a message that is loud and very clear. We're not going back. We are not going back. We're not going back. We're not going back. We're not going back. We're not going back. Not going back. Okay, now I'm going to use my, I'm going to ask you to yell long here in a minute because I'm going to use my teacher voice. Some of you are teachers, and I'm going to use my stern teacher voice, right? And then I'm going to ask you, even if you're not a teacher, after I do it once for you, to use or find your stern teacher voice and say it with me. So here's my stern teacher voice. Mr. Trump and Mr. Vance, please mind your own business, right? Are you going to say it with me now? Put on your teacher voice. If you have teacher glasses, you can put them on too. Okay, here we go. Ready? Mr. Trump, Mr. Vance, please mind your own business. Oh, one more time for the people out there. Mr. Trump, Mr. Vance, please mind your own business. Oh, you all are good teachers, I can tell that. Now this election is starting to feel just like the start of a new school year. And we teachers know that feeling, right? Yes, I recognize you wandering around that school supply aisle in, in Target or wherever you go. That feeling is full of excitement and possibilities and hope because it's a fresh start. Right here and right now, we have a chance to turn the page on Donald Trump. Yeah. Now, how many of you watched that debate where Kamala Harris crushed Donald Trump? She crushed Donald Trump. Kamala Harris crushed Donald Trump. Yes, she did. But I liked when she did. 
did this. She said, we're going to turn the page. Did you see that? I love that gesture. I thought, ah, oh, I can turn the page. So can you with me? Turn the page. All right, I'm going to be watching you. To, I'm going to be watching you because when maybe we can't say anything or you're on the national news or something like that, you just go like that. And I'm going to know just what you mean. So let's try it a few more times. Let's turn the page. Let's turn the page on Mr. Trump. Let's turn the page on J.D. France. Let's turn the page. Oh, that is so good. And you know what else it looks like to me? When I turn that page, I'm kind of saying, uh, bye-bye, Mr. Trump. See you later, J.D. Vance. Let's do that one more time. Bye-bye, Mr. Trump. See you later, J.D. Vance. We are turning the page, Georgia. We are turning the page, Augusta. Very good. Man, you are really good. I feel very hopeful. We are choosing you and you and you and you and you and you. We are choosing a new way forward. Yes, we are. And that is for you, and that's for me, and that's for all of our friends and neighbors, and for our children, and for our state, and for our whole country. And I know a lot's weighing on you. I know it is. And that's part of the reason I'm here today, too, because I want you to know I am with you. I am with you. I feel that, too, and that is why I'm working every single day, every hour I can, just like you, to make a difference that I can. So how lucky am I to get to come here and meet all of you tonight? If I can just say it one more time, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My stars, you people, are brave. You really are. Now, my mom, she's brave too, but she's a retired PE teacher. Any PE teachers here? Yeah. Oh, right, right. Thank you for raising your hand. My mom is 86, and she still substitute teaches. On occasion. She sure does, and she's the church organist and she gives piano lessons. So you don't know my mom, but you know my mom, right? And she always said this to me growing up. She said, Gwen, do the work that's in front of you. And when I was younger, I thought that meant like the dishes, right, or my homework. But as I grew up and she continued to say it, and I watched her, I got to understand that that was both thoughtful, but it was also actionable advice. Now, I know the work that is in front of you as teachers every single day, because I did that, and I still do that. I'm not in a K-12 school because I'm out here campaigning, but I teach a night class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know that we owe thank you. I know that we only have 47 days until the most important election of our lifetime. Yeah. But I'm going to ask you to listen to teachers on this for, for a second, because every minute counts. Teachers, you know how you put your lesson plan books together? Yes. You put it together by three minute, and five minute, and seven minute, and ten minute increments, right? You don't waste a second. You don't. You plan it all out. So I'm asked to share that idea with some other people around you, because every single minute counts. Don't waste a second. We need you to join us in doing the work that's in front of all of us. And we are going to be heartened because everywhere I go across this country, people are doing that work together. And when you get tired, I want you to think, there are people in Minnesota doing this work. There are people in Michigan doing this work. There are people all over this country doing this work because we are together in this. So first and foremost, you have to vote and vote early here. It's important. Now there's a group of us that's called the Educators for Harris, and if you want to join that, even if you're not an educator, join us. You can get in on all the fun. 
Come and help us knock some doors and bring some friends. And we're going to have hard conversations with undecided neighbors. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We are, and we're even going to have hard conversations with people who have signs in their yards that we don't really love. Because we're not giving up on anyone, because they're our neighbors. They're our neighbors. And in order to really have that new way forward, we have to take the power, right? And that is all part of it. Our friends are going to get registered. Our families are going to get registered. Everybody's going to have a plan to vote. We're going to help one another out. Now, I brought some cookies here tonight, but I'm not sure where they are. But I brought them for you, and they're my great-grandmother's recipe, and they're ginger snaps. So everywhere I go, I try to bring some cookies. The other weekend, I made 1,500. Yeah, and those little ginger snaps things and you roll them in sugar and then I put them in the freezer and then before I come here I just bake up a couple and then I bring them with me and so sometimes I'm in Minnesota at night and sometimes I'm not but last night I was so I, I do that because here's what I want you to know I want you to know we are all part of the same family and my great grandmother would want me to bring those cookies to all of you my first time here And I serve those at the Minnesota Governor's Residence every time we have visitors, too. And I, I bake them right before people leave because we go out in that cold Minnesota night. And I think it's good to have a warm cookie with you. So I don't know if it's good to have a warm cookie here, too, but I, I kind of hope it is. And we'll post that recipe in case you want to try that. Yeah, but I have to tell you, my great-grandmother said it was her secret recipe, but I'm pretty sure she took it out of the crystal sugar box. <laughs> but I don't know. So if they're good. So we just kept it in our family. So I want you to know that I'm thinking about you, and I'm going to keep thinking about you. But I think we can all find ways to help that we didn't even know we could. Like, maybe we don't know that we're comfortable making phone calls. Okay then you bake cookies and bring it to the people making phone calls, right? We need treats at those places. And then the next night, maybe you'll be able to make a call because you heard it wasn't so hard. Or maybe your friend sits next to you, or maybe you bring a friend to do it together. Same thing with door knocking. But I am encouraging you to bring treats. Yes, it's important. It's important. But we have to show up for calling. We have to show up for door knocking. We have to show up for each other in whatever way is going to make a difference. Because there is no way through this thing other than together. Other than together. So I'm here together with all of you today. There is a place for each and every one of you in this campaign and in this administration for every single one of you. And I believe that with my whole being. We need you. You matter. And it is all of us together if we're going to succeed. And now Tim and I believe this. There's no more important role than another. I happened, surprisingly, to be in this role at this moment. I did not imagine this even just a couple months ago. I was out doing my door knocking. I was making my phone calls. I was baking my cookies. But you know what? When you get the call, you answer the call. Right? You answer the call. But I want you to know I'm going to do my part and I need you to do your part because that's the only way that this is going to work. So are you going to do your part? Yeah. Oh yeah, you're going to do your part. I can tell that. I can tell that. Now, a last story I want to tell you is about my high school English teacher. Her name is Mrs. Raymer. And in high school, we used to call her Runoff Raymer because she gave us so many handouts. Mrs. Raymer has volunteered in every single race that Tim has run, including this one. Mrs. Raymer gathers together retired teachers in a group, and they write postcards to undecided voters. 
and they keep track of their arguments that they're going to put on there, how many they send, how many questions they get, how many they get back, you know, it's like a grade book over there at Mrs. Raymer's house still. But I see she has tables full of people at her home writing postcards. And do you know what it means to have your teacher still believe in you? It means everything. And I tell Mrs. Raymer that. And that's what teachers do. We find ways to make a difference. That's what all of you do, and that's why you're here tonight. We believe in each other. We see the potential in one another, and we see the potential for a brighter and a different and a hopeful future that includes all of us. Yes. So here's the thing. People in Minnesota, you might have heard this thing, Minnesota nice. That were very nice, kind people. Well, Tim and I are, I hope. We try to be. But here's what I say. Do not mistake my niceness for weakness. When Tim Walls ran for Congress in 2006, nobody thought we could win. We were on the second Democrats in state history to win that seat. It was red, all red. And they said, I don't know that you're going to win, even the Democrats. And they said, hey, what have you ever been elected to? And I said, well, Tim was a homecoming king. <laughs> and they looked at me and I said, I know you don't think that's a ringing endorsement for Congress, but I'm telling you that's the last thing he was elected to. But we had a reason to win, and you know what? He won five more times in that red district. And then we decided to run for governor because we wanted to come home to Minnesota and we realized some really important decisions were going to be made there, and we wanted to have a say and make a difference. And if you look in Minnesota, we had to deal with COVID and civil unrest, and we have a lot of reckoning we're doing in that state, and a lot of hard work, and I want to thank you all for praying for us and keeping us in your heart as we're doing that up there in Minnesota. But you know what? We won the first time, and we won the second time. You know, yes, we did. Because you know what? We do not know how to lose. We have never lost, and we're not starting now. All we know right here is how to win. That's right, because we are about the right things. So I love what Kamala Harris says about this, and I'm going to ask you to say this with me, too, because I think it's so important. When we fight, we win! When we fight, Georgia, we win! When we fight, we win! And one more time for the people out there, when we fight, we win! So you and me and Kamala and Doug and Tim and Mrs. Raymer too. Let's build that future together. Thank you so much.